The Mach number provides us with an estimate of how the speed of a flow or an object compares to the speed of sound. In this lesson, we are going to analyze different flow regimes and learn how we can use the Mach number to define them. All gas flow regimes are compressible. However, compressibility effects are significant when flow velocities are high and we have large variation in pressure and density within the fluid. When the Mach number is less than 0.3, gas flows can be assumed to be incompressible. On the other hand, when the Mach number is larger than 0.3, the compressibility effect start becoming relevant and cannot be ignored anymore. That is the range of Mach numbers for compressible flows. In a similar manner, the Mach number can be used to define different flow regimes based on the speed of sound. Indeed, by the definition of Mach number, m equal to 1 means that the flow velocity is equal to the speed of sound. Hence the flow moves at sonic speed. Based on this notion, we can immediately define subsonic as any flow for which the Mach number is less than 1 and supersonic as any flow moving at a speed greater than the speed of sound. However, this is still not sufficient. We need to add two additional flow regimes to the list. As we move from subsonic to supersonic flows, the transition is not sharp and sudden. Instead, the flow would have both subsonic and supersonic regions. This transition zone defines what we call transonic flows. Also, as we increase the Mach number above 5, the flow starts presenting new characteristics compared to the supersonic ones. For this reason, we can introduce the category of hypersonic flows. Let's now analyze these different flow conditions. Incompressible flows are low speed flows in which density and pressure variations are small. Indeed, it is possible to simplify the analysis of such flows assuming the fluid properties to be constant, given that the temperature variations are small. Generally speaking, incompressible flow assumption indicates constant density flow. Let's now look at an example. The flow around the fuselage and wings of a small airplane flying at Mach 0.2 can be assumed to be incompressible. But be careful, the propeller rotates at much faster speed, with its tips reaching up to Mach 0.7, so compressibility must be included when analyzing that part of the airplane. When the Mach is higher than 0.3, but still less than 1, we encounter compressible subsonic flows. This is a kind of flow that we can see around a commercial aircraft powered by turboprop engines, which flies at about Mach 0.5. In this regime, we have higher velocities than the previous example, and that leads to larger variations of density and pressure in the fluid. Temperature variations in the flow are often modest, so we can assume that the fluid is calorically perfect. Now, let's consider an object emitting sound that moves at subsonic speed. As the body moves, the sound waves get compressed in the direction of the object motion and they expand in the opposite direction. Also, the body never crosses the wave's path. A stationary observer will hear a different sound as the object approaches and then leaves, like the sound of an ambulance with siren on passing by. This is called the Doppler effect. Moving to higher velocities, we enter the regime of transonic flows. 
Transonic flows can be seen in the range of Mach numbers of about 1. Transonic flows present pockets of subsonic and supersonic flows in the same flow stream. To better understand this, we can consider a large commercial jetliner that flies at about Mach 0.8 while cruising. If we look at the wing section, we can see that even if the flow at free stream is subsonic, it could actually accelerate over the wing and become supersonic. Then, the flow decelerates back to a subsonic speed through a normal shock. These effects lead to a large increase of drag acting on the airplane. To overcome this issue, engineers had to come up with specific design considerations for aircraft flying at transonic speed. Now, let's pass the transonic region and enter the supersonic regime. For Mach numbers larger than 1, we can see that a moving object is actually faster than the sound waves it emits. This is because the object is traveling at a speed greater than the speed of sound. Assuming the object to be extremely small, the pressure waves create a front that is called the Mach cone, where the lines shown are Mach waves. The angle of this cone is related to the Mach number of the body is moving at. Outside of the Mach cone, we have a zone of silence where the sound has not propagated yet. This means that if we have a steady observer, it will see the moving object before actually hearing it. If the object is not very small, a shock wave will form at the leading edge and propagate downstream. At extremely high speed, the fluid will start presenting new characteristics. As we pass Mach 5, we enter the regime of hypersonic flows. Again, the limit does not mean that we have a sudden jump in physics as we cross Mach 5. The new characteristics become more and more significant as the Mach number gets larger and larger. First, we can see that the Mach angles and the shock become shallow. Blunt bodies cause the fluid to form a strong detached bow shock. The fluid temperature reaches extremely high values at the stagnation point and in the boundary layer. These high temperatures lead ionization and dissociation of the gases, resulting in chemical reacting flows. Plasma forms around the moving object or vehicle, and the free electrons block any radio transmission, causing communication blackouts. Now we know how important and useful it is to determine the flow regime using the Mach number in order to account for all the involved physics.